Swifters, it's Prof G, and we're gonna be barking up the right tree because we're about to build the Dog Picks app. Now, this is not our usual polished learning video because this is a solution from one of two apps that students had to build on one of their midterms. This one demonstrates a couple of different kinds of API calls. We're working with a sync image as well, so let's get right to it. So first off, I show an overview of what the Dog Picks app should look like. Get a placeholder image that shows up. You can click the any random dog image to see any random dog, or you can select a particular breed and select show breed, and the pictures fade in with a slight animation. The app barks once when you first open it up. I offer the URLs. This API doesn't require any kind of special key. If you paste it into a browser, you can see for the random image, you simply get a key that says message, and that has a string, which is a URL. And if you click on that, that's gonna load a JPEG of a random dog. We're not gonna use the status key down here that says success, there's no need for that. Just refresh your browser and you should see a new random dog show up. Now this URL down here shows how you can see a random image of a specific breed. This URL is set up for pug. So the students are challenged so that a selection made from the picker can modify the URL and we can see a random image of a particular dog breed. Look at that pug, so cute. So let's start building. First of all, create an Xcode project called Dog Picks. Now I also gave students a URL where they could download the bark sound, a launch screen, and an icon. So let's head into the assets catalog. We'll click on the app icon, then head over to the dog resources that we downloaded. We'll grab this dog 1024 by 1024 image and put that in the box that holds our icon. Then we'll grab the sound and the launch screen images and drag those into the asset catalog as well. I'll highlight and copy this name launch screen so that I can paste it into the info P list. I'm going to click on our blue app project icon up top, head over into targets and info, click to expand launch screen. We don't need the UI launch screen in here. That's for UI kit. We're not using that. So you can delete that, but click the little circle with a plus in it on the launch screen row line. And that will open up a box where we can select different options. Select the one with image name, then in the cell over on the right, double click, paste in the image name, launch screen, then click that little circle with a plus sign again. And this time we're going to select image respects safe area insets. And in the option in the far right, make sure that you select yes. That will make sure that our launch screen image will resize and it will not be distorted and it won't go outside of the bounds of the iPhone itself. If you want, you can select a scheme, build and run in the simulator. We see the icon show up in the toolbar, looking good. And we see our launch screen, that looks good as well. So now let's get to building this app. The first thing we need to do is create a text view that says dog emoji dog pics. It should be font Avenir next condensed. So that's a custom font, not one of the built-in system fonts. The point size should be 60. The font should be bold. The color should be brown. We should limit what displays so that it's on a single line. And we should shrink as much as 50% just in case the user has a larger font setting and we need to squeeze the font down so that it all shows on the device. So I'm going to highlight and copy this line dog pics and let's head over to our content view. I'm going to delete the image that's in the stack. And for the text in here, I'm going to paste in my emoji dog pics. I'll add a spacer below this text view. I'll set the text views font to dot font and inside I'm going to say capital font dot custom. I'll select the option with the name, which is a string and the size, which is a point size. And the string we put in for the name is the font name exactly as it appears in the font menu. So I had said that you should use Avenir next condensed. And for the size, we'll put in 60. Then we'll set the font to dot bold. We'll add a dot foreground color modifier of dot brown. We'll set the dot line limit to one and we'll set the dot minimum scale factor to 0 0.5. This looks good. Up next, we need to add a button that should read any random dog. It should be bold, border prominence style, brown with white letters, and we should have some padding on the bottom. So below the spacer, I'll add a button with title and action. The title will be any random dog. Then I'll add some of these modifiers, dot button style to dot border prominent, dot bold. I'll set the dot tint to dot brown, and I'll set some dot padding at the bottom. Next, create an enum, and we should add that to the content view. We're going to call this enum breed, and it should contain the following dog breeds spelled exactly as you see them below. So I'm just going to highlight and copy this line with boxer, bulldog, chihuahua, corgi, labradoodle, poodle, pug, and retriever. Then I'll head back to the content view, and there's no reason why I can't put this inside the struct, because I'm only going to use this on this particular view. So we'll say enum, capital B, breed, colon. We'll say string, comma, and case iterable so that we can use the string raw value of these. 
open and close curlies, and we'll say case, then I'll paste in this entire line with all eight of our breeds. Now remember, by saying string in here after the breed name, we can access any of these values as strings as well if we just say dot raw value after the case name. So then below the any random dog button, we're gonna add another button and also a picker to the right of that new button. That'll be just like the images that were shown at the start of this section. The button should read show breed and it should also be bold, border prominent, brown with white letters, just like the button above it. And to the right, there should be a picker that when clicked should show the breeds from the breed enum that we just created. So down below our button, if we're gonna get another button with a picker side by side, we need to put that in an H stack. And since I want my button to have the same modifiers as this one, I'm gonna highlight and copy the button above, paste it inside the H stack, but I'll change any random dog so that it now says show breed. Then we'll enter a picker and select the option with the title, the selection and content. Remember for iOS devices, the title is nothing. So I'm just gonna put in an empty string here because it would never show even if we put something in here, but we need a variable for our selection. So let's head up top and create a new value. And after the enum, I'll say at state private var selected breed colon capital B breed. And remember we wanted to make that to be boxer first. So we'll set that to equal dot boxer. Then down here in selection, this is a binding value. So we'll start this out with a dollar sign and say selected breed, then tab to content, press return for trailing closure. And then to get the different values that are inside this picker, we're gonna use a for each statement. So I'm gonna select a for each statement with data ID and content. Our data is gonna be breed dot all cases. Remember we can iterate through those because they're case iterable. Tab over to the ID, that's gonna be backslash dot self. Tab over to content, press return. I must have selected an option that didn't pass any value here, but we wanna pass in, we'll call it breed in. Then inside, as we iterate through this, we'll add a text view. We're gonna pass in breed, and then we'll add the modifiers down below, dot bold, dot tint, passing in dot brown. And oh yeah, the problem we have here is we need to add dot raw value after dot breed so that it can put the string in there. There we go, it shows up. This is looking good, but I want the picker actually to be brown and bold as well. So I'm just gonna highlight the bold and brown, cut that out. And if I paste this below the H stack, then I can delete the bold and brown that are below my button. Command A, Control I to fixed indents, and this is looking good. And oh yeah, we're supposed to capitalize our breed, so we'll just put dot capitalized after raw value. Cool. Up next, we create a dog view model. Now this should contain a class that acts as a view model for our app. This class should contain whatever is necessary to avoid the purple error. So I give you a bit of a hint in here. We covered this in our lessons, hint at main actor. Remember those purple guys show up whenever code that's associated with the user interface runs outside of the main thread. The class should contain a property named image URL, which will eventually be updated to have the value from the messages key in the JSON that we're returning from our API call. Now the API call could be passed in using a URL for either the random dog URL or for a specific breed like the pug breed shown below, we would use this particular URL. And one thing that's good to know is in both of these cases, the JSON that's returned is identical. Then after we do this, we're gonna set up a get data function and we need to do everything that's necessary so that when this is called, the appropriate URL is used for the API call. The JSON is parsed. The value in message is then pulled out and it's put in the image URL. Also, after the message URL has been retrieved and added to the image URL, we wanna print out an image saying the image URL is whatever the image URL is. And I give you a little example of what that should be like below. So let's head back to Xcode. I'm gonna create this just below our dog picks app file. So I'll right click on that, select new file. This is gonna be a Swift file, not a Swift UI view. We'll call this dog view model. This is class dog view model colon. It's gonna be observable object. All our view models are open and close curlies. And remember that business about avoiding the purple errors. We wanna say at main actor up top. Now we're also gonna have one published property at published var image URL equals initially it'll be the empty string. And below this, we also wanna set up our URL string to make our API call. So we'll say var URL string equals, and I'll just highlight and copy that from the exam. And now I need to create some kind of data structure to get and parse my JSON. So let's take a look at what this will look like in the browser. So, okay, we see at the top level, it's not the key value pair message. We actually have this struct and we can tell that because we start with curlies, not with a key. So we should create some kind of struct first to return a value that's got a message as our key that's a string type inside of it. And we'll do that simply with struct result colon codable open and close curlies and inside we'll say var message colon string. 
Then we're just going to write a get data function, and it's going to be the same way we wrote this function for our Pokemon app, and our students also did a Game of Thrones app during our class when our class met. So we'll start that off with func get data open and close parens async open and close curlies. I always like to print out the string we are accessing the URL string interp URL string, and I put a spider emoji out front just so that we can see that easily in our console. Then we need to convert the URL string to the special Apple URL type with guard let URL equals capital URL, select the option with the string, pass in URL string, else, in case it returns a nil, open and close curlies, return, and just above that we'll print angry emoji, error, could not create a URL from string interp URL string. So now that we've got our URL, we can go ahead and make our call to URL session. We're going to do that inside of a do catch clause, so do open and close curlies catch open and close curlies. And now remember a call from URL might throw, so we're going to start this out with try await URL session dot shared dot data. You want to select this option with from, and we see down here in code completion, yep, it's async, so we got to put await out front, and it could throw, so we got to put a try in front of await, and also look what it returns, a data and a URL response. So we'll get those two values as a tuple. First, press return to accept this, and we're going to pass in lowercase URL. That's the URL we created from the URL string in the guard statement above. Then out front, we can say let in the tuple data, comma, we can put in an underscore because we really don't care about the response, equals the result of the URL session. So that means we just got data back from this URL session call, and we put it in a constant called data. Then down below, we want to decode our data. So we'll say guard let result equals try question mark JSON decoder, open and close parens dot decode there's only one option in here with type and from our type is capital R result dot self and our from is data which we got back from our URL session see the result dot self is just this result struct that we created up here and in case this doesn't work out we'll say else open close curlies return inside and then above this I'll just copy and paste this error statement but change it to read JSON error could not decode return to JSON data from string interp URL string but if this works out we want to say print the image URL is string interp image URL oh yeah and we've got to get our image URL so above this we'll say image URL equals result dot message remember we're up here going inside the result struct grabbing the message property and we're putting it in the image URL then if this doesn't work, I'm going to copy another error line, paste it down below in the catch, but I'll modify this to read, error could not use URL at string interp URL string to get data and response. Then we should update the content view so that when the any random dog button is pressed, the get data function is called, and we should see the correct image URL printed to the console like the example shown below. So again, this is just to prove that we can in fact make a successful API call and parse the JSON. So let's head to the content view and we need to create an instance of the view model we just created. We always do that first with at state object. We'll say var, call this dog VM, set this equal to dog view model open and close ends. Then to execute our get data call inside of our button in the button action for the any random dog button, remember we need to start this out with that capital T task clause open and close curly because we're about to call an await function. Or I should say we have to put the keyword await out front. We're going to say dog vm dot get data. Notice code completion says this is async. We have open and close parens after this. Then let's build and run in the simulator because we want to see the results down the console. We'll click any random dog, and hey, we make our API call, and we get back this particular URL. Nice. So now that we've got our image URL, we're supposed to use that to retrieve the image from the internet and display it in the center of our app screen between the text view at the top and the buttons and picker at the bottom. And we showed an image and how that should look at the top of this exam when displayed the image should take up as much space as available without any part of the image being cut off. The dimensions of the image should not be distorted. The image should have rounded corners with a radius of 15. It should have a shadow with a radius of 15. Any new image after the first image should fade in using the default animation. Also, we should use a placeholder image when a valid image isn't shown or when the app first runs. The placeholder image should be the system image with the name photo. It should take up all available space without being distorted, but the image does not have any rounded corners or shadow, nor is it animated. So let's get this done. I'll add one more spacer below the text so I can add my image below that. And we know if we're downloading images over the internet, we're going to use a sync image and we're going to use the option with the placeholder. 
Now our first parameter here is a URL. It's got to be a URL type, so we need to convert our string to a URL type. We'll do that with capital URL, select the option with string, and we'll pass in dogvm.imageurl. Then tab over to image, press return. We get our trailing closure format. We'll name the value that's passed in here as lowercase i image. And this lowercase i image is a full blown image view. So we can refer to it in the code below as image. And then we can perform everything on here that we usually do when we want to modify an image. Dot resizable dot scale to fit dot quarter radius 15 dot shadow with a radius of 15 and we'll also set up our dot animation with dot default and this is going to happen if the value of image changes then for the placeholder we want that to show up initially and whenever we load an image so we're going to say capital i image for the image view here and select the option with system name we're going to pass in lowercase photo that was mentioned in the question on the test and we'll just copy the resizable and scale to fit. Those are the only two modifiers we want, and we'll paste them below this image. Then let's try this out. Let's click on any random dog, and oh, look at them doggies. Nice. If you click the live preview restart button, we see our system name photo show up. Cool. So this is looking wonderful. Last up, if you click the show breed button, that should take the breed that's selected from the picker and use this to update the URL string used in the API call so that we get an image of the dog of the selected breed. I also give you a little tip in here that says that some breeds have only a small number of dogs. So for example, there are only two Labradoodles. So if you selected Labradoodle and you click that, you'd probably see the same image a few of the times or just one of two images. Be sure that when you click any random dog that you return to the random dog URL that you had before you clicked on show breed. So that suggests that we want to update our URL string before we make the API call in random dog or before we make the API call in show breed because those are two different URLs. I point out again down below what those two URLs are. And since we want to work with this URL when we show breed, I'm going to highlight and copy this. And also in the last question, we want to add a play sound function and do everything necessary so that we play the bark sound that we put in our resources file in the assets catalog so that it plays once and only once during startup. Let's get this done. So we need to add some code for the button action for show breed. Now we're going to do the same thing we did up here with a task call to dogvm.getData. But first we got to update our URL string. So it's got that URL that will get a breed specific random dog. And we've got to update the breed in that URL based on what was selected in the picker. So inside this button action, we'll say dogvm.url string equals. And in between quotes, I'm going to paste in that URL that we just copied. But you see in here where we got a pug? We're going to get rid of that pug and we're going to put in a string interp. And what are we going to pass into the string interp? The selected breed. But note that's of type breed. But we want to get inside this is its dot raw value, which will give us a string. Then I can copy this entire task block. Paste it down below the dogvm.url string that we just updated for the random dog of the selected breed. And this will work perfectly, but it will present one more problem. If we go back up here and click on any random dog, we're going to continue to use this dogvm.url string that's got the specific breed. And we don't want that. So I'm going to highlight and copy dogvm.url string equals paste it in the any random dog button action. And here we want to set this to the string of the generic random dog URL. This one up here, I'm just going to copy that right from my test, paste it back in between the double quotes. And let me tell you something, dog, I think we're ready to try this out. Let's build and run this bad boy. Check out any dog. Look at those dogs. This guy looks like a little terrier in here. We'll see another rad random dog in here. We got a Jack Russell. It says it's a Vizsla. We've got oh, an elk hound there. Lots of different ones. Let's select a breed. How about pugs? Those are cute. Click show breed. Look at that pug. Let's see more pugs. More pugs. Look at all those pugs. Fantastic. How about some chihuahuas? Ay caramba, will you look at that? We got chihuahuas showing up now. Outstanding. Back to any random dog. Looking good. We can go back and we can select a different type of show breed in here. We got some bulldogs in here looking fantastic. So again, we can click on either of these buttons. We're resetting to show all kinds of random dogs for any random dog or for a specific breed. If we click on show breed swift, the last thing we got to do is play that bark sound when we start up the app. Let's get to it. We know we've got to do an import of AVF audio. 
then we got to set up an AV audio player property. So we'll say state private var audio player colon AV audio player exclamation point. So we declare this, but we don't initialize it. And let's create a play sound function. We'll do it just before the close curly in this struct with funk play sound open and close parens, open and close curlies, and in between the parens, we'll pass in sound name, colon, that is of type string. Then we want to try to get the data from an asset in our asset catalog. We'll do that with guard let sound file equals NS data asset. Select the option with the name. What we're going to pass in here is the sound name. So that's the string of something that should match up with the asset catalog. Else, open, close, curlies, return. And if this doesn't work out, if we're not able to read in an asset from the asset catalog, then we'll print out angry emoji could not read file name string interp sound name. But if this does work out and we've read in an asset from the asset catalog, we're going to use a do catch clause down below. And in the do, we're going to try to initialize our audio player with audio player equals try AV audio player. We're going to pass in data in here and specifically we go into the sound file that we just read in from the asset catalog, but we want to get its dot data property that should have some data that we can play as a sound. If this works out and doesn't throw an error, then down below this, we'll say audio player dot play open and close parens. But if it doesn't work out, we'll put another print statement below with an error. We'll modify this so that it says error colon string interp error dot localized description creating audio player now we need to call that play sound function and we need to pass in the name of the asset that's got the sound what is it called oh yeah it's called lowercase bark i'm gonna copy that then when do we want to call this well we want to call it when our v stack appears the very first part of our view so i'll code fold v stack and just below padding i'll say dot on appear and in between its curlies i will simply call play sound bark and ho oh, did you hear that our live preview played the bark for us let's build and run i got a little bit of distortion in here it's just an error in my project you're probably not seeing that but we heard the bark as well nice let's try this out click a random dog Ooh, that looks like an alien dog click some more look at those cuties you want to see a specific breed click on show boxer how about show the pug look at that guy with his tongue out it's a pug fest then back down to any random dog looking good lots of dogs in here let's check out the corgis too bad the queen's not around for this app she would love that so Swifter, I hope you did well on this. If you struggled on this, I hope the explanation helped. And now you understand a JSON parsing JSON and async image even better. Feel free to install dog pics on your phone if you're a dog fan and you'll always have some joy. Just a button click away. Continue to hack.